Good morning, good afternoon, good evening around the world, wherever you're calling from. We've got a very special webinar today because Malaysia is in the center of a lot of the activity going on right now in Asia and ASEAN countries. Uh, there's certainly a lot of dynamics, political dynamics, trade dynamics that, that are going on that are driving businesses to change where their regional headquarters are, where their manufacturing is. And Malaysia is an outstanding place to do business. Uh, I've done business there personally, traveled there many times, have seen it firsthand. And our guests today, our keynote speakers, are firsthand in it and they can give you information to be able to help guide you in your next steps for your business. So my name is Doug Brunke. I'm the founder and CEO of Global Chamber, and I'm just really pleased that we have such an extraordinary uh, uh, presenters today from the Malaysian Investment Development Agency, MIDA, from the Vistra Group, and then also we have uh, Galaxy AG discussing their case study on setting up their PPE business in Malaysia. So I'd like to turn the program over to Susan Asadi, who's the Director of Global Chamber in New York City. She'll be guiding you through the moderation today and I'll be coming back in about 35, 40 minutes after the presentations to help with the Q&A. In the meantime, as you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box or send them to info at globalchamber.org and we'll handle them in the Q&A section at the end. We'll be wrapped up right after 60 minutes. So uh, we're not gonna go over more than 60. So without further ado, Susan Asadi, thank you so much for pulling this event together and also for moderating today. Thank you, Doug, very much. Um, it's been really fun to get to know each one of the speakers. So first we're gonna have um, Nelson Samuel Wilson speak to us. He heads up the New York Consulate Office as the um, Consul Investment and Director of Malaysian Investment Development Authority, MIDA. He joined in 92 that company and he's worked in several sectors there, including evaluating um, businesses coming in, projects coming into Malaysia, including building materials, textiles, and other industries. He's worked in many marketing functions and he's been involved in strategic planning functions, overseeing industrial development there, foreign direct investment and domestic investments. He's also worked um, abroad in Tokyo, Japan, and Seoul. So let's hear what um, Nelson has to tell us about MIDA and your um, organization. Thank you. Well, thank you, Susan, uh, for the nice introduction of myself and also MIDA. I think uh, basically I have a slight presentation to get you guys all through in the next, uh, hopefully, the next 25 minutes. Uh, so uh, uh, this presentation is going to highlight Malaysia as a potential hub in ASEAN uh, and, uh, and it will be divided into three parts uh, which would be touching on how the government of Malaysia has mitigated the lockdowns and also the risk and contain the virus outbreak as all of us are being faced with this challenge now. And then next we'll move on to uh, introducing ASEAN and my final part will be covering Malaysia. So this is the first part, COVID-19 impact global uh, and as well as in Malaysia. Next, Caesar. So on screen, I can want to show you the impact to this, uh, what it, this pandemic has done to hold the world, uh, to all over the world and including Malaysia. Just yesterday, we had UNCTAD or the United Nations uh, report coming out and then they have uh, firmed this up by saying the global FDI will be dropping in fact, to 40%, it's envisaged to drop to 40% in 2020. And as you can see on this slide, it's a, it's a very sharp decline as how it has been in previous years. And notwithstanding, OECD also came up on, on predicting the global GDP uh, to also drop at that annualized rate of 24%. This is something unprecedented. It's approaching a levels of economic decline we have not seen since the Great Depression era of the 1930s. On the right side, you can see the global trade, of course, trade and investment are part of uh, and parcel of the elements of the economy and trade has been projected to decline between 30 and 32% in 2020. And, and of course, the uh, impact of the Malaysian economy this year is gonna be between GDP at least is forecasted between minus 2% and 
and 0.5% by a central bank. Job losses about 2.4 million, of course, is unmatched with comparing with America or USA. However, we are losing jobs. And in fact, uh, household incomes as well and consumer spending down by 11%. Next. Next. Yeah, uh, okay, this slide uh, shows uh, basically a situation update. Is it, it, it is actually as at 10th of June 2020, I just put all the countries within ASEAN, just for the record, since we are talking about ASEAN today, uh, you can see Malaysia as outlined in the red outline over there. It's uh, cases about 8,000 plus. And, but uh, the good point is new cases and new deaths are hardly coming in and negligible. And, and in fact, Malaysia is ranked under the category uh, of winning, nearly, nearly winning the COVID-19 outbreak alongside some developed countries like Japan, Germany, and countries in the Europe. Of course, within ASEAN, if you can see Thailand, Vietnam, are doing great, yeah, winning the battle, but Malaysia is not far from, from getting there. Next. This is the, as, as how it has been with all economies around the world, including US, uh, we have of course uh, did a lockdown uh, when the virus outbreak came in March. It set its footprints in March, in uh, middle of March. We had six phases now. Uh, that has been implemented in Malaysia, if, uh, if you can see overall, six phases. And this is basically covering phase one and phase two is between 18 to 31st March to, and also 1st to 14 April. Uh, the government has locked down practically everything except essential, essential industries, which is basically uh, uh, Im uh, important to actually look at the, uh, to, to look at the economy. So basically that's, 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 bas that's basically what is going on. So then the next phases were taking place with the, what you call the machinery, uh, uh, yeah, machinery industries, non-essential industries going up, non-essential industries coming in phase three, phase four and five were in April and mid-May. And this is the part where we actually had the restart of the economy. And this is uh, mo where most business and industrial sectors were given permission to resume operation. And now, as we speak, we are in the sixth phase under the recovery period. And this is where the government has now allowed almost all economic sectors to re reopen and resume, except for sectors which are still uh, not permitted, which include contact sports, large gatherings of worship, and entertainment outlets. And these are things that are still not open. Reportedly, there's more than 80% of workers returning to work. Of course, there's many companies out there which have not implemented full operation, depending on what state they are in. But the government is sensitive towards this. Recently, we are even talking uh, about opening the borders to certain expatriates moving in. We have already announced a guideline last week to allow key posts people who are stranded overseas to return to Malaysia to look at a business. This is how the government has been always uh, sensitive and looking at the business angle. Next. So the economic stimulus package, of course, by, in, in, as in the case of every country, as well, Malaysia is no exception, we have introduced so far a uh, stimulus package worth $69 billion divided into three packages. Of course, the first two packages came in very much early on and it was targeted at the small and medium enterprises. This is a very mainstay of the Malaysian economy, the backbone of the Malaysian economy, and therefore the government had focused on that group. In fact, uh, the, the, the stimulus package are worth a lot to Malaysia. It constitutes about 80% of the GDP. Uh, it may be not as compared to US, but it's a lot to Malaysia. And in fact, we are third largest stimulus package introduced in Malaysia after Germany and Britain. The latest one being the, the one on the bottom of the screen, that's on 5th June, 2020. Now this package is actually focused on propelling the businesses and that includes about uh, supporting foreign direct investments as well. Next. Next. Oh yeah, okay, uh, this is a slide. This is a facts about ASEAN. I have actually, this is covering my second part of the presentation today. I wanna touch on these infographics that I have 
uh, on screen, uh, which, which portrays ASEAN as the third largest market after China and India. Why is because it's uh, offering its large labor force with over 640 million people in Southeast Asia today. It's envisaged to be the fourth largest economy in the world by 2030 at, by many research institutions. ASEAN is fast growing, fast growing society. It has high growth in GDP per capita as well as eradicated most of its poverty. In fact, 79% reduction in 13 years, that's a fascinating number. Today, we only have 3% of ASEAN's population below the international poverty line. ASEAN as well is the third largest recipient of global FDI ever since it opened its doors. And I want to say that Malaysia was among the first country that to open foreign direct investments into Malaysia with Intel from California setting its footprints in the Malaysian shores, uh, in the northern part of Malaysia, and the manufacturing facility close to the international airport back, way back in 1972. And of course, Malaysia has, has evolved into many stages and phases. And today we are in embracing the fourth industrial revolution as we move towards the digital economy. We also have 99% of intra-ASEAN trade uh, eliminated, which is something pretty close to North American free trade area, where if you have your business in ASEAN today, wherever the 10 countries within ASEAN, you can trade, you can bring in your raw materials components, or you can export out without almost duty, almost no tariffs, no duty involved. ASEAN as well as leapfrog from a cash-based and old paper-based society to a instant payment, an estimated 330 million in internet users. These are staggering facts for you to know about ASEAN today. Next. So, uh, yeah, you, you, can you see the screen on foreign companies increasingly looking to Southeast Asia as an alternative to China as a manufacturing and supply engine? Now, this is basically uh, the slide that focuses on ASEAN as a viable location for many major multinational corporations, including from North America, for the factors of low cost, efficiency, and resilience. As I said earlier, it opened its shores in early 1970s, today is a export hub, as well as a place to have your service-based operations in, in any of these countries. We complement each other, the 10 countries, which are of 10 different stages of development. Uh, what we do is we complement uh, each country based on strengths and its values, and all foreign investments are most welcome to look at doing business in ASEAN today as a viable supply chain location from anywhere in the world, irrespective of where you are currently. Uh, and, and it fits in well moving forward, especially of, uh, of looking in the manufacturing as well as services-based sectors. Next. Okay, this is the part I'm gonna get into Malaysia as your gateway of investment in ASEAN after my brief introduction of ASEAN itself. Uh, well, the next slide will show you how Malaysia is positioning, uh, is positioned in within ASEAN, strategically located right in the heart of ASEAN, home to a tropical paradise, as well as embracing multicultural society. We are something similar like in the US, we have multicultural people today. We have Malay, we have the Malays, we have Chinese, Indians, of course, joining all of us are basically people from the East Malaysian society and all of us are united through one common bond, which is basically English speaking language, uh, which has been uh, declared as an additional official language besides the Malay, Bahasa Malaysia in Malaysia by the Malaysian government. And this, this bodes well for a lot of foreign people, foreign expatriates, foreign companies doing business in Malaysia. Of course, on your right, there are, uh, there, this is a good balance that I've actually structured in having all the various factors that is going out for Malaysia today, including well-developed infrastructure, both physical as well as soft connectivity. Today, Malaysia's digital economy is consisting of 86% 86 of internet penetration. And we have almost uh, uh, every people looking at YouTube's around 80 minutes, at least on an average daily basis. We have 20.9 million smartphone users more than 22 million out of 32 million population using Facebooks. We have more than 7 million using Twitters. These are basically facts 
of the e-commerce and how the digital economy is in Malaysia today. And it's thanks to the soft connectivity and, and broadband concentration in major cities around uh, the whole of Malaysia. Of course, we have young, trainable, and educated labor force, which I will touch upon just shortly in the uh, following slides. We have good quality of life, good track record, most importantly. This is a slide. Uh, okay, next. So this is a slide that shows Malaysia right in the hub of Southeast Asia. Uh, this ours is basically looking at air connectivity. Uh, we are connected to Thailand by two hours, Far East by six to seven hours, and Europe 13 hours. And these are all basically uh, the international airport and airlines. ASEAN GDP is about two and a half trillion dollars. And there's about 640 million consumers from 10 different company, countries. Uh, and also our digital economy is estimated to be one trillion dollars by 2025. Now that's a staggering facts and, and fastest growing region in the whole world today with averaging 5.3% over 20 years, albeit a slight interruption for this year due to the pandemic. But then again, this, uh, this map is a very important map for you to indicate that ASEAN is there connected to the world. I didn't put North America and South America because it's, it's, a, it's a very much far away, but that's, that's the reason why it compels you to have a business in Southeast Asia today. Think about it because uh, you're far off. It's a very distant region, but having a business, a physical presence, of course, we have a, in the new normal doing business online remotely, but you have to have a physical presence in Malaysia be it in manufacturing or services sector, and, he, and we are here to help you grow your business. Next. So they, uh, Malaysia has basically been a gateway to ASEAN and beyond, simply of one important factor here, which is the 14 free trade agreements which we signed regionally and bilaterally, uh, which gives you an access to not just the 640 million people I was talking about within ASEAN, but it is also to about 3.9 billion population in all those countries that is mapped out in this slide. You can see these are countries that have signed the free trade agreements and offers a, a lot of opportunities. If any of the businesses are located in one of these countries in ASEAN or in Malaysia, you can export it out or bring in imported stuff from all these countries with almost zero tariffs for 99% of your products. Now that's basically an important fact for you to consider this. We are still working on our free trade agreement with the European Union. We are, we are getting there, we are working on it and hopefully uh, something happens with, uh, of course, uh, the United States as well. Next. So uh, this is a cost of living index in 2020 by Mercer. Uh, this Mercer is, a, of course, a New York-based company. They are the large human resource consulting firm. I talk, took the liberty to actually highlight that Malaysia is considered as one of the least expensive cities to live in. It's ranked 144 according to the cost of living index, uh, even much, much less expensive than Singapore, Bangkok, Manila, as you can see among some cities, Ho Chi Minh and Jakarta. And also these uh, parameters that were used to be to, to, to measure the cost of living through city to city comparison include food, domestic supplies, housing, home services, utilities, entertainment and transportation. Something very useful for expatriate packages to look at uh, uh, and an important insight, especially when we, we are faced in a critical time of disruption caused by the pandemic. Next. So this slide shows U.S. projects, manufacturing projects. This is just manufacturing projects implemented in Malaysia. Look at the facts. It's a staggering facts of 809 manufacturing projects from the U.S. alone today doing business in Malaysia with offering 204,000 job opportunities. Uh, they have invested or realized $21 billion, almost $22 billion. Second largest investor after Japan in terms of foreign direct investment. The U.S. investment in primarily is very important in the electrical and electronic industry contributing about 76% of the total U.S. implemented projects. And of course, they also have investments in petroleum products and machinery. Next. Yeah, these are major U.S. companies today uh, doing business in Malaysia. I'm sure you're familiar with 3M, Boston Scientific, 
Hemonetics, these are in, and St. Jude, which is of course over uh, taken over by Abbott Laboratories. These are guys who are doing business in Malaysia today. We also have Jable Circuits, HP, Dell, Western Digital, Motorola, and of course, Texas Instruments, and Intel down here, which are predominantly having business in the electronic industry, Eastman Chemicals, and of course, Exxon Mobile in extraction industries are in oil and gas, Coca-Cola, the iconic uh, multinational, and I want to add here, Hershey's Chocolate too, have set their footprints in Malaysia in the manufacturing sector, uh, uh, specifically in food and beverages. And, and, and down here, I want to highlight that Honeywell, one of the major American companies, together with Intel, IDT, have chosen Malaysia as a regional headquarter. This is very important as a hub in Southeast Asia, and not only Southeast Asia, beyond that, in Asia, other parts of Asia, controlling all their management functions from Malaysia. On the services side, just a few to highlight, but I'm sure there are many more. Microsoft, IBM, Liberty Mutual, and MetLife, they are among the offices that were set in Malaysia. Next. So the growth areas that Malaysia is going to focus are all these highlighted on the screen in the manufacturing sector on the left and services sector on the right. The ones highlighted in yellow are basically those positively impacted by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic outbreak where demand has surged tremendously. And these are, of course, Malaysia are in a well, is well positioned to welcome investments from America, Canada, and also everywhere else. Foreign investors come in and take advantage of our attractive packages at this time. And of course, not to mention on the top, our, our talent pool. This is something that is going for Malaysia today. As I earlier mentioned, ASEAN itself as a young, talented workforce growing rapidly and contributing to the growth of young population. This is the propelling factor that, allow, that you have to think about doing business in Malaysia. And Malaysia's annual graduates coming out is about 130,000 from 20 public universities and, and, uh, and double than that in terms of private universities. And Malaysia ranks number 22 in world talent ranking under the IMD World Talent Ranking 2019. And we offer high skill about 27%, semi skill 60%, for you to look at your business is in either manufacturing or even the services sector, which we are very much uh, uh, positioned well in medical tourism, green technology, and logistics as a logistics hub. ICT services, where we are all now, we have to focus on e-commerce with the pandemic as well. That is open opportunities a lot in this area. And, and, and therefore, I, I would like to, of course, welcome all of you. Next. So this is a business case. I want to highlight how an American company basically has actually set its footprints in ASEAN, primarily in Malaysia. Honeywell is a American company that has a manufacturing operations in the aerospace, machinery, and automation control solutions in Malaysia way back in 85 and has grown into three major manufacturing facilities in Malaysia. But what it did was, as I talked about complementarity earlier, uh, within ASEAN countries. Now, this is a this is a case. This is a business case model that shows the complementary of a company using its strategic functions in Malaysia as well as putting its money in other countries around ASEAN, not to have and spread it out. This is precisely what I'm talking about. Not putting your eggs all your eggs in one basket today. Look at uh, your alternative supply chain, and Malaysia can be well positioned to welcome your business interests. Next. So, of course, uh, I've talked about a lot on manufacturing, but on the services part of it, Malaysia is home to 35.6%, for example, of global business services centers in ASEAN alone. Today, we are ahead, as you can see, uh, ahead of Philippines, even Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand as the top countries serving as a second home to people doing their shared services in Malaysia uh, and, 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 and primarily in Johor in one of the service-based clusters in Malaysia and if, of course in major cities in Kuala Lumpur and Penang. American companies account about 14% of the total global business services in Malaysia. Next. These are business-friendly investment policies. We allow 100% equity ownership in manufacturing and selected services sectors today. This shows the pro-business government active uh, role in facilitating and, of course, we allow repatriation of income, freedom to income, repatriate capital, interest, dividends, and profits out of Malaysia and coming in Malaysia without restriction 
And this is the part which I touched upon, the employment of expatriates in either key posts or term posts. The government is look, has already given a flexibility, even despite the lockdown, that to allow people coming into Malaysia to oversee their business, uh, especially when they already have approved expatriate posts. But we are also considering to look at people coming in to oversee the technical visits to see the machinery and installation as well. Now, that's, the, that's what I call a proactive business government. And we have intellectual property protection in Malaysia. IP laws are in conformance with international standards like WIPO. We have signed IGAs or investment guarantee agreement with more than 60 countries to protect your investment. Next. So to help you look at all those things, MIDA or the Malaysian Investment Development Authority is basically the one stop for foreign investors. Today, we work hand in hand with a lot of our strategic partners, uh, including the government, the chambers, and we thank Global Chambers to collaborate with us today in basically having this webinar. Special thanks to Doug and Susan. And also, of course, we work with other international consulting firms. I'm happy to note that one of my Acquaintance Norayan is also joining us today, speaking about Vistra. And of course, uh, we work with banks as well and uh, foreign chambers in other countries. And we are doing promotions around with 20 overseas officers and with three overseas officers in the United States alone, uh, which is in New York, Chicago, and San Jose. And I'm based in New York. What MIDA does, we basically is a one stop for all manufacturing activities. We are also a one stop for the approvals for representative and regional office and R&D office, which are service based. MIDA gives the approval for that, tax incentives, matching grants, expected posts, custom duty exemptions. We are also work hand in hand with other regional offices and states. And the most important, we have even an in-house talent division to look at the talent pool required by most businesses. We can match you with the local supply chain through our engineering support. We have a strong it's cluster, supporting cluster for the machinery industry. And as well, we can match you by looking at uh, local manufacturers to be a viable option for your supply chain, especially for American companies who are far away. We have close collaboration with the technology enablers in the ecosystem of the economy, like CIRIM, to look at your standards of your products and certification of the products. We work with CRAS and MIMOS, which are primarily research institutions and technical institutions in the electronic industry. And of course, we, look, we do even funding, I mean, matching view with the business partners, like I said, our strategic international banks or local banks to offer the funding facility. And of course, this representative and regional office is the first step for you to look at the market entry point, to study the market, and you're welcome to use Malaysia as your base. Next. So the international standings shows it all, how Malaysia is positioned today. According to the CEO World Magazine, World Bank Group, A.D. Kearney, these are Bloomberg as well. These are all international standard uh, organizations that have given Malaysia the accolades we are the, the first best country to invest according to last year's CE World magazine. Namely, we were also second in terms of ease of doing business within ASEAN and 12th overall globally. We are eighth in terms of high-tech manufacturing exports as well, according to World Bank. Next. Before I end my presentation, I'm, I'm already reaching at my tail end. This gentleman over here is our current and the eighth prime minister of Malaysia. He has basically announced on the 5th of June, just recently, Malaysia as an attractive horizon for businesses to propel foreign direct investments, to propel the economy. And we have attractive tax packages on sale. The sales period is between July 2020 to December 2021. Take advantage of it. I want to urge and encourage all of you to look at whatever operations you have in the world, in the world to come to Malaysia. If you do relocation of any of your operations, either fully or partially, and you come to Malaysia, you enjoy 0% tax rate between 10 to 15 years with an investment threshold of $70 to $120 million for new projects. And we are also looking at existing projects to continue and sustain the business operation. That's been the principle of the government and the latest package that we announced. And with that, uh, next, I want to end my presentation next by allowing to introduce myself. I'm based in New York at 43rd Street in New York, and you are most welcome to contact me 
and as well as Susan, my partner in the Global Chambers, and, and together as we do a follow-up yeah, so on the business. Was, um, thank you very much for your yeah, attention, and I want to hand it over just, to Susan. You know, just a highlight on where the we are right now, as thank far you. as what the platform's going to look like. Um, thank you very so much, Nelson. That was, very, that was very, it was a wonderful presentation. Um, so uh, next up, and with it's all this information coming from MIDA, we also um, are honored to have Noreen Abu Talib with us here at um, so we still to 1130 a uh, evening and of course from the KL. So she's really the director great. of VISTRA so, Group. Um, definitely she's been on and with VISTRA Malaysia from its inception there, and she's been heading up the Malaysian growth and leading their team. So that's it. Service offerings range ranging from corporate to individual clients and many industries. Awesome information, She's Jennifer. also Thank very familiar very with and all so the local regulatory on requirements, both onshore and midshore. Uh, and she's going to give us a short They're presentation a on, on the experience of district in Malaysia. So, so I encourage you, you very much, to Lorraine, jump if you into could, both uh, of those events and see, okay, see how it works Suzanne. for you. Um, Our next speaker is equally um, experienced and knowledgeable um, about uh, international. Uh, Paul Neville is the chief operating uh, officer of Angemu, um, and uh, Paul, um, you're going to be sharing more about uh, your we experience have, um, and what, your crystal ball in terms of what this new normal world, is doing um, for you and your business, and how others might be able to benefit. Thank you for sharing. We are headquartered in the Hong Kong, and we have offices in Southeast Asia, such as. Uh, in Singapore, Asia, Malaysia, um, Malaysia, uh, run a small, Indonesia. Um, in Malaysia itself, so we have uh, our biotechnology company. In, so um, my experience and here going that's from traditional to digital Singapore, is really in the, uh, in in the biotech space. Before. And we hopefully have they, uh, here in Malaysia. some of my we tips and tricks and experiences our, will um, translate uh, in help for, uh, for everyone else. So here's uh, this um, picture is a picture of Bio Europe last fall. So this is the last, well, no, actually, JP Morgan to last, expand uh, their live event I went to in early Asia January. And and, you know, I'm not sure when these are going to come back. Yes, uh, to give you a bit this, of, is, um, this is kind of, of like um, speed dating for biotech. So this was uh, an event that had about um, to, um, 20, 2,300 companies. They scheduled Malaysia. about 27,000 meetings uh, over the course of uh, four days. Um, there were maybe 2,500 delegates uh, in attendance. And so uh, this, is, this is the main meeting hall. And, you know, speed dating, you've, you've got 20 Five minutes, and then five minutes to, uh, such as to uh, switch chairs. Of so companies, hopefully, uh, hopefully of what I uh, talk about today and, um, will, uh, will be helpful. All right. And so to uh, I've broken this up into three kind of three groups. So we, we start on the, the screen. Um, so the, the first thing is really. Um, like first bit of advice is to For really know your platform. Services, we do so, you know, take advantage of webinars that the companies um, offer company on this. In the, in the biotech account. space, there's really two For main meaning conference payroll, platforms. We do uh, Bio.org has one, and, and then CBD Group uh, or Informa or Connect has the other. And um, both of them offer you know, webinars. I'm sure other, other digital platforms will do the same thing. As, uh, uh, it, so every system account, is different. And uh, really, uh, if you can learn the benefits, it, it's really going to help you make the jump to digital. One of the things I love about some of the platforms is they have templates. So when I'm doing pitch Letters. I can load up different different templates for uh, who uh, you know who I'm targeting that particular day. Um, and then the, the meeting platforms are all they all have their own idiosyncrasies. So uh, if you can learn on, uh, some platforms like Global Meet in this last EBD conference in, uh, in Bio Year Spring Digital, uh, you could only get the person's email address while the meeting was going on. Other companies, not, um, they tend um, to provide that early on. Uh, but it's, uh, a bit of a it, it's good to, to look at the web interface, Indonesia. but if there is an app, Thank you. I would definitely um, say download, because uh, a lot of times the app has a little bit more uh, Thank you very much, capabilities Noreen. or features. And now uh, we're lucky to have Rehan Hadi, who is actually CEO who of Galaxy, who they, created you know, a company. Uh, I mean, he's been in uh, business for over 22 years. But in this timely period of COVID, he just created a company based um, in Malaysia for PPE. Is, um, so you know, let's now kind of hear from Rehan about why he chose Malaysia your, uh, your and profile. how it's going in this volatile in, in time. The system that I've had experience uh, with is kind of like broken up into a delegate. 
uh, a company uh, and just product. Just to give a bit of background, uh, I've and been it's, living it's in Malaysia for almost two years now. Different information can be and uh, um, can be each area. My so sometimes the company will say specifically they're looking for licensing or out licensing. In in other times, so specific delegates years. will have and that so, information uh, listed just, on their uh, individual profiles. So if you take the time well. when you're looking at and companies course, uh, and you know, I was lucky enough to find that a good level partner of, you know, because, uh, that's quite important in Malaysia company, if you have a local partner, um, it's it, much it definitely easier to will, uh, will tend to benefit and, uh, you. Um, of course, uh, and then, there are you know, the uh, so many areas to explore. Good, uh, uh, of like course, uh, Mr. Nelson had already mentioned, uh, um, there are so many areas uh, uh, to it's operate just a good old your, uh, and invest in. So um, you just want to make sure that you have all the Of course, Malaysia is the third largest economy in Southeast Asia. Very well connected uh, in terms of communication channels, anti very much compliant and uh, very well developed uh, legal system, so fusion and uh, protein, very uh, dynamic and so we, we uh, as a, for business environments. And, uh, and we, so we, uh, we days, started we looking into uh, uh, investing in tech startups, and of course, increase in the trading business, which is uh, mostly based on TPE given the COVID-19 situation right now, later, post and the uh, four-day cycle. As a great uh, example, like minutes, Malaysia is uh, very so well known around the world. Uh, the I don't know if like many of you know this, but for nitride gloves and latex gloves. So the you, you largest company that, that manufactures uh, nitride gloves in the world is based in Malaysia, called so Hartalega. It makes it easy for and uh, there are 39 more companies and manufacturers uh, basically uh, producing that same product. And it's top of the shelf. So as for my experience in uh, starting my company, in, uh, the secretarial in, procedure in was so smooth that I didn't even have, notice that uh, just a one day had passed in, by. And that happens so in order to register our company, we just needed to provide our company so secretary uh, all the necessary documents. To it's it's just uh, like not sure much. Uh, it's just a few IDs and uh, visa information and all that. And of course, the registration money. Like and it took uh, just, a, just a day in, companies, in the midst of a lockdown as well, do uh, all which is quite impressive. The week the first and, uh, and a lot of times, well, so far we've had an amazing right journey. Uh, uh, so as, uh, if given you're, to uh, you know, if you're late, you're foreign be, buyers, uh, especially uh, uh, European buyers, when they or, hear uh, that uh, I'm doing TV from Malaysia. They become happy. The, the, digital, uh, the, uh, the banking system is uh, excellent. The, the, the country's uh, digitization um, is very, very and good. The last, the, the last tip on the slide is really, uh, of course, I mentioned one of the software, products. Find, find but quite as, a, as a hub um, in Southeast Asia, um, Malaysia is very well uh, connected the, with the other manufacturers the, across not just Malaysia, but Thailand, Singapore, of days. Vietnam, the Philippines. Things. So you know, if, you're, uh, if, you're, if we you want know, to source a particular China, type of it's, PPE, it's going to be 12 hour we can just connect with our um, manufacturer in Thailand very uh, easily. One meeting where they can you know, have the product come in, in the morning, uh, Malaysia, curtains, but like, the uh, little detail with a very short lead time. time. For, so, uh, so far, uh, we've been very successful a really with nice a buyer in so, Ireland uh, so definitely who's getting nitrile gloves from us, knowing, uh, and uh, when uh, they're supplying and to various sure nursing homes and the NHS in Ireland. The space is correct for that. Uh, and finally, Moving forward, uh, we're looking to establish uh, um, good relations with sure buyers across the U.S. market, um, Middle East, uh, almost and of course has uh, Wi-Fi South Asia as well. Personally, I prefer so, if you have a wired uh, connection, if you have gigabit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's our story it, so it's far. Gonna be, if you have any uh, questions, just shoot them at me. Video. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, all right. Let's see. For the uh, the next slide. Hey, thank so you is, very much, Rehan. This is going to be difficult to see, but hopefully you can... Now, uh, I have a couple questions for the speakers, and, and then I know we've been encouraging you uh, as participants to uh, profile. This was by load up your questions spring, in the Q&A. Um, if you have any, please do that. Uh, um, so, things. Nelson, so the, you gave a very detailed presentation, but I just wanted are, to find you know, out if you want to reiterate like, anything like in terms of Malaysia's focus on areas You'll be limited that, that to a, in terms of sectors a, that you're trying to attract right now from America. I know you mentioned manufacturing, electronics, food and beverage. So you know, is very high. Is there really anything that, else you, you want know, to add to that in terms of types the last of companies you're looking to get into at specific, from a U.S. You know, aspects that we want? You know, because our our anti CD three. Well, uh, thank you, is, Susan, uh, for the question. Has potential for yes, uh, like you know, I've actually talked a lot about U.S. Uh, presence in Malaysia for the benefit and, um, of our audience today, and because you know, my data plays a very important pivotal role in actually looking at the industrial development in the whole of Malaysia. We are the it, national investment agency. You know, 
to Therefore, look at that, search your own company, the, look at how your company comes up, look at other companies, at all different and go back and rewrite it. And, and so I'll do an editing for the process US, where I would you know, say I'll just go back and the, forth rewriting the important see what aspect that we that want to target screen, is because the technology really part of it. That people as we see all know, the US is well known for its high technology around the world and high value added operations around the world. We have so, been targeting um, these kind of products, yeah, not uh, now, yeah, but many years back. And we want to continue um, doing it so that, within the is, manufacturing again, select sector. Is, is kind of we are being selective. Uh, I might say that we don't I mean, know target, openly um, promote do everything about the, uh, know, today. About Malaysia the is not, it's just a 32 request. million population. It's a small population um, like comparatively with other ASEAN members, like Indonesia, Philippines, who offer much larger labor force. And much in, cheaper in labor force. So what I'm trying to say, we are selecting, basically promoting industries another, that fits in, uh, in our ecosystem, letter, and, and again, that fits in, in our value slide, chain of uh, the industries. The so for US, I certainly the, welcome uh, high technology uh, based the, the products will from will have, American companies, sometimes. not just in manufacturing, um, but also looking at the services sector. Like I said a lot in the presentation in the digital front, this is the opportunity for you to come to Malaysia today, set your hub, and grow your business in e-commerce. It's going to take strides very much as we move forward, and the pandemic as well has created an opportunity by my more than for that. this kind of businesses um, you know, thrive on. Systems, Besides e-commerce, you know, uh, we're looking at share, logistics as well because the market is huge. You like it or not, China, India, the, the Far interest, East, the Asia uh, overall talking about. basically so is a I, I large market. Delegate, and you know, for Americans first, doing business from the U.S., a, yeah, it's give, give certainly a distance away. That's why this is a compelling factor for them to look at a logistics hub in Malaysia. Set your logistics when the e-commerce goes Further, point, I think you like need a lot of just, warehousing. Uh, people it, are going to buy online. To, uh, people are lot know, are going to, uh, at, and, and the, probably you need the all these goods to, to, to be shipped out to their homes in a they very they short that, and fast manner. So that's one example in. I just want and, to take uh, I think that's into a, consideration. You know, huge and of course, you know, we welcome research and development R and D technology. And before I end, I want to add. One more uh, final to, thing to get is basically Malaysia today is embracing the fourth industry uh, industrial uh, revolution. That means that we are into AI, today, so we are into big data, letter, we are into IoT, it. It, we are into fintech, cybersecurity, uh, and, and all this stuff. All these are basically the pillars you know, times, of the uh, fourth industry revolution. And we know there's a lot of startups, a lot of companies in the US are into all this. Basically, we welcome them. We can work together with our other agencies in Malaysia, namely the multimedia agencies. Look at how they can actually set their hub in Malaysia. You know, Thank you. Uh, we're we'll focused on business development Thank and licensing and partnering. So this next question um, I'm going to ask to both Nelson and, and to Noreen, and maybe you can both weigh in. Um, so, and I think you've said a little uh, bit about this already, when, Nelson. You know, you know, you know you as really the, the business because if you scenario, have time, as we've been discussing, has changed tremendously I just send a quick in this back, COVID uh, era, the era system, and the hopefully says, um, looking hey, at the uh, crisis waning a bit. What strategies is Malaysia adopting to achieve this agenda, specifically MIDA? And then after you... Addresses. I'd like Noreen home. to say something um, if she would like you know, take, to about take, if Mistra has changed meeting, any of their uh, strategies. If, I think it's really important. You know, you you do a lot of meetings. Okay, all uh, probably I'll go together. first. Uh, uh, I, I want to tell you that uh, I, again, follow, again, I want to emphasize. Uh, MIDA is, uh, is a one-stop really national investment agency for so, foreign investors uh, and you know, also for domestic investors as well. We look after up, also the and, local you know, supply chain. Space, this is these, our role, our major role, connecting get, both uh, foreign to reach the and local supply chain uh, and together. And so our strategy has been always simple, meaning we want to continue business in Malaysia. We are actually in the different levels 
levels of so you gotta, development you within that. ASEAN and, and today, the picture shows Southeast we're not Asia, going to go networking events as I introduced so to all of you, we have 10 can, different countries, some, 10 different economies. Uh, the, so Malaysia is at a different level yeah, so, playing field compared to Singapore. But one thing is thank you. Great we are complementing each other. Really great, great uh, we are cooperating our, through our an ASEAN free trade area. We are complementing each other's strengths for laying the base for foreign investors to come and take and pick their location and selection. Say, and I'd for like strategies, to thank in I must say that with the US like a, I want to emphasize again for, for with man, manufacturing is, and uh, services sectors are primarily is the largest contribution contributed to the GDP of Malaysia of today. Uh, we have the other component, which so is the primary for, for primary those. industry, Colleen has but made this is a so small portion which is dominated so by Colleen, oil and gas your, your because of our Jessica large resources Reynolds in those areas, Maryland and Commerce agriculture, and which Ellen we also have a large resource of cash crops in farm oil. The but then for the manufacturing and, and services sectors, we are very clear. We are targeted in our group. Our strategy is to attract high technology and high value added industries within the manufacturing sector. Thank you, Doug. And this Virginia's includes the fourth industry revolution is technologies Virginia as well, like I mentioned previously. Uh, we are no longer so looking any, at a cost Virginia competitive cheap labor because that was seven, in the 70s and 80s. Now we are in the new era and post-COVID so era, we will also look ourselves as an attractive destination for medical device industries. And our friend from Galaxy is one of those who are contributing today. You know, uh, in um, terms of looking at PPE slide, products. Virginia has so that's a how the strategy works well for Malaysia on the government webinar, side I want to and amplified be by the presence of the, the private pandemic. sector. Such so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's basically our game plan to, to make Malaysia as a high technology center within ASEAN, as well as a regional headquarter base of service-based operations in ASEAN. Today, um, we have grant money seen to Hong Kong have issues, trade there's shows. a lot Just of like talks Michael going Conford on in Hong Kong today of its status. That we, that we are looking at also a Singapore, our neighbor, who has been a, very much regarded as a main entry port nation, as a service-based operation nation. But I encourage you on to talking on cost competitiveness, as well as for the trade show, space, Malaysia has 130,000 square miles of space Virginia for a lot of business to come in, wherever they may be, whether they are bordering Singapore shipping, in the southern part, or in Kuala Lumpur, the capital city, or in the northern electronics cluster, no problem. Or even East uh, Malaysia today is going up rapidly program, which in Sabah, Virginia the Kota Kinabalu. Please offers a strategy. Program. Uh, Twice a year, uh, we what do you call uh, advantages program, and on average, companies increase their international up base sales by fifty-four percent in ASEAN. Two years. Not only for looking in ASEAN, two. but overlooking their business and beyond ASEAN. Virginia has Asia contractors Pacific, in even as far as Europe and America. You can see them up here on the Thank slide, you very and they Thank provide you. on the range. Um, Virginia like to add anything about the strategy to determine whether or not is looking at the Virginia strategy. company should pursue business oh, in that country, oh, oh, and if it should, is, um, our contractors um, can identify, qualify, so and confirm so virtual uh, meetings for you with prospective right clients right and partners. And um, um, we have to recently think of these contractors as your outsourced business development teams in their respective in their respective countries. We had to cancel our Mexican trade mission during this pandemic. And so four of the eight in, companies um, decided to do all the their meetings on for the week virtually. One, that one of the four companies had simultaneous translation for the all their virtual meetings. And for us to the meetings were a huge success. In fact, one company is pursuing so $150 million, deal, that a million dollar deal that was identified during one of his um, virtual meetings. I believe that even after the today, pandemic ends, more companies will choose to do virtual introductions so and qualification meetings in order to save time and money. Please connect with me and I'll show that you're leveraging all of Virginia's international business development resources. Client, I would now do, like to introduce my colleague in Maryland, Jessica Reynolds. Yeah, Jessica is the senior director for the Office of International Investment and Trade at the Maryland Department so of Commerce. At the, Jessica? At the same time also 
second Thank steps you, Ellen. actually to recover. So now at the moment, yes, we so, are at uh, the recovery similar stage to in Ellen's Malaysia. Role, uh, so other in Virginia, I'm with so the state of Maryland, and, and uh, I would like to make sure that any Maryland companies uh, here on the call are familiar also with the Maryland services that are available for you. Not just within Vistra, but also within uh, Vistra Network. On the screen, you can see members of our team who cover different regions of the world. The third part we is actually have tribe. 16 so foreign tribe is actually offices around the world. That's one of the services that we offer to you in Virginia, for the um, covering so many more countries. Part of the so there's most our amazing part and we can uh, offer free assistance have to companies who are looking for market that, uh, research, uh, partner or distributor search, and things in terms of that nature. Um, trust, the main um, program that I also wanted to point out during this particular global month is and our we have our MD grant program. And this program expansion. offers up to $5,000 so in reimbursement for expenses. For expenses. So what happens and is we kind of match the eligible expenses do include travel so related expenses, but work, something that has come up uh, as a result of COVID-19 kind of is that this kind of partially SBA-funded program um, is now allowing a greater amount of those funds so, through the program to be used for non-travel activities. Those include uh, items such as translation, website localization, uh, digital marketing, of our, shipping of sample products, and uh, compliance um, testing um, for export markets, that we and export work, research tools um, description. Uh, we also, so that's what through happening this at uh, the program, moment, can uh, cover uh, just like we cover regular trade shows. Susan, we have a follow-up question to that. Registrations or Please mission registrations, it also okay, can so, cover uh, Narine, the uh, mission question we have relates to the so fact that this group is headquartered in Hong Kong. Apply for you're obviously program, in which KL, and you mentioned that you, you basically uh, you're a service uh, provider you for companies that are Maryland, growing and expanding into to other countries. And so the question is, relative uh, to this issue of, of for at least one some year companies, um, award, maybe many companies, uh, reevaluating uh, their China position, how is, what are you seeing within Vistra, given that you yourself you know, are based in FDA. Hong Kong um, uh, as a company, are what are some of the things that you're seeing uh, from these companies in terms uh, of how they're project, deciding to, to either relocate or not to um, relocate, and, and how does Malaysia fall into the category? What are you seeing in terms of what types of companies, and, uh, what kinds of decisions are they the making, or are they finally choosing to choose for more information Malaysia. about the application process well, it depends and on uh, how exactly on that would work? Um, company strategies, for example, if you're looking but at specific to this webinar, I, I will point out that we are also uh, uh, going to Ellen's uh, team um, on the sort of, of the experimenting now with one of these virtual options. We have a delegation plan to attend Sidai in Chile at the end of March, and that was canceled. Hi, and we also have world. had about have half also, of those participants um, uh, interested in moving their very, matchmaking um, meetings that we had arranged for them through our foreign have, office um, uh, uh, online. And so we are currently in the process uh, of getting those different stages um, of getting those set up for our company. So, and, uh, and you know, we look forward to the, um, assisting trend that I have been moving forward, both when things begin to recover, but also in the virtual world. And as I said, Ellen, that probably some of these things are going to be here to stay. We have blockchain so type of company. That, we have like actually blockchain village uh, in Iskandar uh, Malaysia. Just actually set up and now it's our blockchain village in Iskandar Malaysia. Colleen Fisher, we have uh, who majority a lot of um, E and E type of Thank company, you, manufacturing and uh, type my of company. We also have um, we are all a services type of company the one uh, that at the moment we are coming up. We have also majority a lot of consultancy based company. Uh, everybody and, um, knows that Petronas is one of the uh, world brand um, in Malaysia. So, so there's a lot of a company coming in from outside Malaysia, in Maryland, looking into um, expanding their business the in Malaysia. So these are types of um, companies that we are looking at as well. And um, not forgetting healthcare is one of the major, I think, impact in Malaysia. Even in Iskandar Malaysia, we have several healthcare companies that are expanding into Malaysia. Looking at relocating, relocation is actually a bit different. Uh, so basically, companies, for example, um, 
in the second country for example Japan uh, or Korea. And these are commercial so these are the type of companies that are looking into relocating because of tax efficiency. Um, so they are certain companies that will be able to speak the local language and connect to the local economy. Depending on what type of nature that you are looking at, our local trade specialists in the United States However, are the ones that you might come in contact with first if you're located in America. I hope that I answer you all your questions now. I think most of it and definitely the part I think where they were going um, was the if they Maryland, come to you, if a company comes to you, are you able to kind of give country by country you, advantages um, and disadvantages? How, do, how does that work? Say they want resources. to come into ASEAN and, um, area, and so will you give them kind of a here's the advantage of Malaysia versus to, um, others? How, how does that work with investors? Okay, we do have an international expansion team. We do actually provide that kind of detail comparison. And we um, also work with associate companies depending on the in time countries zone, that we don't have any price um, in. So we do provide that, um, that video, comparison in terms uh, of uh, based on we your um, environment and needs. So we do actually the provide that. We are able to provide some guidance on what's happening in the South market. South market. Yes, we, do uh, that. we can help you promote your product. Okay, it's appropriate. got it. And so um, going and back to the original question for Rayhan, Rayhan, why not China? Why did you decide to do what you're doing in Malaysia? Is there uh, the given the background uh, and experience of uh, several friends um, so who have that, already been uh, back, doing Doug, business over here for several hour. years um, now, if, um, uh, like that stood as a main point of reference for me. But then also my wife had to move here because uh, she's a human rights Thank lawyer so practicing in Malaysia. Thank you so for everybody. We only have a this couple is all minutes left, <laughs> so we don't have and, time uh, for all of the course, questions. Uh, Keep the, asking your questions the diversity either in, uh, online Malaysia, especially or I live in KL, send them to info at the global change. And, uh, the friendliness and we can process those in a blog anywhere you go can, in Malaysia. Uh, it's amazing. The, you know, and uh, with the video, with the recording food, uh, later. Of course, uh, One, with my limited uh, knowledge of Chinese, I can speak I a bit of Mandarin, but I can't quickly. really survive uh, in China and order food and you know, eat anywhere. The program, but then in but Malaysia, just everything's halal. Bill as long Jennifer as it doesn't say non-halal, everything's halal in Malaysia. Everything's safe. And what does this food regulation look like a year from now? Uh, so, yeah, those are the all that I can mention for Tremendous now. strides and adjustments no, no, to where sense. we are. So back to you, what Susan. Sorry, I wanted to make sure that me. question got in. Uh, got Bill, how answer. about you? What do you think? You might have to unmute. I feel okay, that I, we I'm, did a really I'm good job here. Now. The only um, other question I had for Rayhan, I know he like mentioned Ireland, that he's received some orders. It, it, I just wondered. Are there other I'd parts ideally of like the world to see where you travel, open borders, getting on planes? Or ordering I, I and also for the way it was before. Will that happen? I don't think so. I think we will have, as, a, as has been mentioned, travel so bubble, definitely a, where you can Europe travel right from some is, countries uh, into others. Largest, um, there will be restrictions. Perhaps you'll in terms have of, uh, an immunization card if PPEs, vaccines are out, but, uh, showing also, that course, you, you the have received the vaccine against COVID. And uh, surprisingly, I'm anticipating uh, again some Middle travel, but with restrictions and, reselling and well. a lot more so, being done uh, that's another, online uh, destination than that we have been done before. Into. So uh, that, that's my had, quick uh, crystal ball. Korea. We've you're you're not looking Morocco. forward to go back to teletype, uh, but definitely travel Australia. is going to be required. So, uh, how, how about inquiries you, are always coming in, but uh, I mean, same thing also we given the border travel heavy and, and also uh, everyone the fact uh, that there are so many scammers in the market right now who are actually trying to divert people's attention and trying to make a quick buck. Digitalization is probably going to be here to stay, and everyone should just get comfortable with all the tools that were mentioned before. Zoom, everything that we're using, but also I think when the physical event does take place again, there's going to be so so many uh, restrictions, like what way you're walking down the aisle, how wide they are, how many people so are in the together. together. So I think overall, I mean, there's going uh, to be massive change. Will they stick forever? Yeah, I, I don't does. know. But I all right, Doug, I'm going to throw it back not, to you I think for you to uh, close years, this out. We're going to look a lot different for all of us. Okay, yeah, we're just and kind of wrapping up. I presume, and let's as well. Maybe, oh, gosh, um, yeah. I've never seen uh, I mean, use I this opportunity like the to, um, in the, the case of Rayhan, uh, thank you for uh, attending really? and for contributing. Ooh. Your your contributions today were very valuable. You? What do you think? Like a real case study. Well, being in the biotech space, and Nelson, you both shared some case studies and also 
kind get, of the general uh, benefits the of and, uh, of, of Malaysia versus yeah, others and some of the dynamics the of the year. market. In the, in the final next minute or two, or two, could okay. you each take well, maybe 30 uh, seconds, 45 seconds, and just wrap up your, your, Thank you your, all, your section? Paul, Anything else that Colleen, you want to say Jessica, and just to make and sure that people know how to get a hold of you? Narayan, would you like to go first? And I'd like to now turn over the program to close it to Mijong Hibbets, the Global Chamber oh, Executive Director for Baltimore yeah. Water. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Um, I, I guess yeah, so um, what I well, want thank to you say very is much, uh, today very, 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 for the uh, uh, great uh, panelists and uh, great presentation. Uh, it has been, I think it would be a really great innovation um, for uh, exporters in this region and, and you know, um, in the U.S. and beyond. And, and the way uh, I see it, I have been looking at the international clients and and um, talking about the experience the, for the past you know, four years, it has been very, very uh, good customer um, relationship in Malaysia. And most of the how feedback I received from my clients is that Malaysia is one of the uh, um, easy market, and, uh, easy entry uh, market for them to expand their business. Said, uh, you know, and if you need, if you have any questions, you can actually just drop me an email at my email address. I think we should have incorporated some of the strategies or techniques that are actually my yeah, if anybody, um, uh, you can either find this in our directory or um, send an email to info at globalchamber.org. I'm happy to connect you if, if anybody uh, can't get a hold of Thank you so much. Um, so let's let Nelson take the, the final words. Nelson, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I think it was Rehan mentioned, that Malaysians are, I lived in Singapore, so the sensibility that I got, especially relative to like native Singaporeans is that Malaysians are just so friendly uh, and relaxed well, and, and uh, it was just always a pleasure and uh, and so um, it's certainly uh, one of the aspects of why people uh, are looking to so, Malaysia. So again, could you just take a few I seconds and just kind of wrap up uh, of some of the investment today, side and, of it and, uh, and then, to, then we'll, we'll wrap up. Thank you, Doug. I just want to say this basically, you know, your right, the people I've introduced have a multicultural people just like more, Singapore, you know, the we also are uh, very get, warm and friendly uh, and uh, united uh, with English for the speaking that makes so, business very uh, again, easy thank you very much to do and uh, well. in Malaysia and live thank in you. Malaysia, of course. Bye -bye, everybody. And on the have government side, you know, we have always been uh, putting the business agenda right on the top of our, our, our strategy viewpoint. Basically, today we have a six R strategy. We resolve. The mitig and mitigate the virus when it started its outbreak. We have a resilient in terms of introducing the stimulus package and trying to help solve the unemployment in Malaysia. We restarted the economy moving uh, in somewhere in May. We are now in the phase of recovery, basically by uh, uh, introducing relocation. Yes, that's the word. Relocation has been one of the topics, in fact, you brought up, Doug, I think that's a good point. That's a strategy too for Malaysia and on the government side to look at any businesses around the world to look at Malaysia as a alternative supply chain. And moving forward, we will also want to revitalize and reform the whole economy basically to get back to where we were in 2019. That's, the, that's where we are heading to. And I'm happy to be part of this discussion today. I thank you again. Uh, and I think this webinar sort of opened the eyes in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, I mean, uh, to reach out to a lot of audience, happy to be connected to Raihan. I, I will be happy to also connect you to U.S. potentials because I'm based here and I'm also having my colleague at the trade side for Malaysian exporters looking in penetrating into U.S. market. So please, uh, my email, my contact is in the slides. I'll be happy to share it with all of you. And Norayan, I'm also looking forward. It's nice to see you again <laughs> after a while. I mean, <laughs> what a small world, as the saying goes. So thank you very much, all of you. Thanks. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Narayan. Thank you, Rehan. Thank you, Susan. Really appreciate you pulling all of this together. It was a great discussion today. We learned a lot. We will write a blog post and this will have a, the recording of what we did today. And so any additional information that we collect 
you know, any of the speakers, we're happy to put information in there, inc including Narine, for instance, your contact information if you're open to that, um, and uh, so that people can uh, contact you going forward. In terms of Global Chamber and going forward, we do, we're doing events like this all the time, almost every day. We have, um, I think, a couple of events tomorrow, uh, one of which is uh, are some partners in Singapore. We're talking about what Nelson talked about, and actually Narine also touched on the fourth industrial revolution, where we're talking about artificial intelligence and some of the markets and opportunities there um, in fintech and, and, and other spaces. So stay connected. You know, we're all about new opportunities and looking and being, you know, I love the four or the five R's, one of them being resilience. One of the things we always talk about for global business is be resilient because one thing that is absolutely for sure is that things are going to change. And so we have to move and adapt and be flexible and ultimately be resilient to be successful. It's why most people aren't involved in international business. Most people can't do it. They don't have the resilience to, to handle what's necessary to be successful. Unfortunately, we have a, a really strong global tribe, uh, tribe represented both by the speakers and by our membership around the world who are capable and they are definitely global and unstoppable. Thank you so much for again joining us and have a great morning, afternoon, or evening. Take care everybody. Sleep well, Narayan. Thank you again. Thank you, Doc. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye, Nelson. Bye. Bye, Narayan. Bye, 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 B